powerhouse begins the season ranked number 11 in the nation. Slowed by the flu bug and with a trip to Nebraska just one week away, the young Seminoles need to oil an offensive machine that has sputtered in spring practice before meeting the number eight ranked Cornhuskers on national television. Sunshine Cable Network, in association with Continental Cable Vision of Jacksonville, presents CFA College Football. Tonight, from Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, it's the Toledo Rockets and the Florida State Seminoles. CFA Football is being brought to you by First Union National Banks, by Home Box Office, and by the Tallahassee Hilton, America's Business Address. this time of the season. So as the Florida State Seminoles get set to kick this thing off, Toledo will send back Renza Hewley. He'll be the uh, deep man. And of course, Derek Schmidt will be uh, there to kick it off for Florida State. What a prolific kicker this guy has been for the Seminoles. He has never missed a PAT, either in junior high, high school, or college. And he's still got one more year to go here at Florida State. He will easily set all the new Florida State scoring records by the time his career here at Seminole Land is over with. A crowd of about 50,000 plus expected. It looks like we've got just about that despite the rain and the inclement weather. The 1986 football season, Florida State style, is about to begin. And Schmidt puts it underway. Hewley will stand back at his own five-yard line and take it there. Wedge forms in front, and Hewley's got a big hole. Hewley, 40-yard line, one man in between, and Derek Schmidt is there to bring him down at the 45-yard line. Oh, my. Now, you talk about first-game jitters, Keith Jones. Coach, that's, a, that's a good example. Coach Bowden just had one, I can assure you. 40-yard kick return by Renza Hewley, and the Toledo Rockets are off to a great start. Credit Schmidt for that tackle. Otherwise, that would have been six points. Bill Bergen is your quarterback for Toledo. You can look to these guys to throw quite a bit tonight. Bergen's going to do just that. Fakes it coming out of the backfield lots of time. Dumps it out to the fullback, John Perry. And Perry can't hang on to it. Pass thrown just a little bit low. It'll be second down and 10 for Tulsa. Your starters across the offense. Thomas, Olsen, Lindberger, just a freshman center. Todd Olsen, your right guard. Brian Hartong, your right tackle. Two out of those five are starting their first collegiate football game. Bill Bergen, your quarterback. We'll see A.J. Sager as well. John Perry and Kelvin Farmer, the number one rusher, round out the backfield. We'll check the wide receivers after the play. Second down and 10. Quick out, Bergen. Looking and broken up. Trying to hit Joe Windover. And the left side cornerback, Deion Sanders, was there to meet Windover as the ball got there and separate the two. Jeffrey Burns, your tight end. Eric Hutchinson, the leading receiver two years ago. And Bob Wasinski, your flanker, rounding out the offensive unit for the Toledo Rockets. So after a 41-yard kick return, the Rockets find themselves third down and 10 at the 46-yard line of their own. Steve Gabbard, Thomas Hart, Gerald Nichols across the front for Florida State. Nichols, the only returning starter from the defensive line last year for Florida State. Bergen, draw play, gives off to Farmer, and Farmer's going to go down after a couple of three yards. Felton Hayes was there to put the helmet on for Florida State. Hayes moved from inside linebacker to outside linebacker this season, and that gave him a starting position. So, Toledo, much the same as they were last year, unable to move the football. As you see Farmer trotting off, we'll have to boot it away. And that means we will see a freshman kicker here, Paul Krim. This is his first kick in collegiate football. Tim Ingles, the All-America candidate we talked about earlier, is snapping the ball tonight because the regular snapper is hurt. This is Ingles' first snap and Krim's first kick ever in college football. Keith Ross is back deep to return for Florida State. Rather not Ross, but Deion Sanders, and they're just going to let this one go. Krim rolls it inside the 20 and down to the 19-yard line, and so the Seminoles will take over first and 10 at that point. see an offense that has been prolific to say the least and that young man right there Chip Ferguson the 6'2 sophomore out of Charlotte North Carolina who led his team to the Gator Bowl victory last year is going to be called upon to hopefully lead the Seminole team if you're a Seminole fan into the top 10 and with a victory at Toledo this evening Ferguson your quarterback Victor Floyd will be your tailback Tanner Holloman your fullback in the I formation for Florida State first down 10 Ferguson fakes off to Floyd this is out in the open Holloman's got it Pushed down and a lot more. Holloman inside the 40 and down to the 41-yard line. Holloman.
Freeman knocked out of bounds by Harold McGuire, the free safety for Toledo. Lopez, uh, Jason Kuypers is actually not starting. It is Parrish Barwick, a late uh, change. Jim Henley, Mark Salva, and Pat Tomberlin, both of them, starting on the right side. We say both of them. Tomlin's all of 300 pounds. Ferguson, Tanner Holloman, Victor Floyd in the backfield. Carter, an excellent tight end. Herb Gaynor, Darren Holloman. Gaynor has been pulled, and it will be Randy White starting instead of Gaynor early on. Ferguson finds another man down at the 44-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Jim Marquard in on the stop for Florida State. It was Pat Carter, the tight end, getting his first reception of the evening. Keith Dunbar, Paul Sander, Clarence Good, Brian Gable, Tim Ingles. This is a very small defensive line. Steve Huffman, Jim Marquard are both number two team players. Both starting linebackers are hurt for Toledo this evening. Brian Jones, Dexter Clark, Harold McGuire, Mark Patton, they are all fifth-year seniors. They return their entire secondary intact. Second down and five. Screen play. Fumble out of bounds, and Florida State will recover. It will be enough for the first down, however, as Victor Floyd took the first pass coming out of the backfield. It was Keith Dunbar putting pressure in on Chip Ferguson, and making the tackle was Mark Patton, the strong side safety. One of the things Florida State has not done in the past, especially last season, is use the screen play. Here we're going to see Ferguson drop back, faking up the middle to Floyd, forming a screen to our right as we look at it. Victor Floyd's out front. A couple of good blocks right here. You can break it open. We see the fumble come loose, and an alert Paris Barwick bounces on it. First down, 10, fumble. Floyd couldn't hang on to it, and Toledo's got it back. Let's see who comes up with it. Right side cornerback Dexter Clark for Toledo recovers the fumble. Clark, the 5'11", 190-pound senior out of Flint, Michigan, gives Toledo excellent field position at the 49-yard line. And talking to Bobby Bowden yesterday, this is the one thing he did not want to do. Turnovers will kill you, especially early in the ball game, and it's very, very important for Florida State to hang on to the football just as it is for Toledo. That ball's wet. We do have some rain coming down even a little harder than when we started. So Toledo, first down and 10, 49-yard line of Florida State. Same backfield, John Perry, Kelvin Farmer for the Rockets. Wide outs to either side. Here goes Farmer. Farmer, two yards and a face full of Gerald Nichols. Steve Gabbard also in there on the stop for Florida State. Gabbard from Concord, North Carolina. Gabbard missed all the spring practice with a bone chip in his knee. Kelvin Farmer, the leading rusher for uh, Toledo, as, as you see his numbers against Wichita State last year. Rushed for just under 750 yards last year. He is the leading rusher. John Perry, the other fullback, or the other running back in the backfield, is running in place of Mike Barajon, the normal fullback who is injured and will not see action this evening. Second down, seven yards to go. Bergen's got all day to throw. He's got a man. It's Farmer down inside the 30, 29-yard line. Bobby Bowden was talking about the possible weakness in the defensive line, Keith Jones. That's twice we've seen Bergen go back and have four and five seconds to throw the football. As long as you give a quarterback time to sit back there and read, he can. We're going to see Bergen come back. He's looking to his right all the way. He's trying to hit the tight end, looks like, originally. Everybody clears, and finally he finds the back on the sideline, turns it upfield. Very fortunate Deion Sanders was there with his feet in order to cut him off, or it might have been six. First down, Toledo. Eric Hutchinson, the wide receiver to one side. Bob Wasinski, the wide receiver to the near side. First down, ball spotted at the 28-yard line of Florida State. Bergen, Farmer, right side. No chance. Felton Hayes is there along with linebacker Paul McGowan. Gives us a chance to talk about Paul McGowan. You know, they're saying that McGowan and Fred Jones might indeed be the best linebacker combination in the entire nation. Not since Florida State had Paul Porowski, Porowski and Reggie Herring has Florida State had a tandem like this. You're not going to be able to run the ball wide against Florida State. Here we see Farmer breaking it out there, and you just can't do that. We've got Florida State's got four people out there that can pursue the ball too well. Gain of one on the play. Second down and nine. Hewley in motion to the far side. Pitch Farmer. Gets a block from Perry, and Farmer busts it across the 25 and down to the 24-yard line before Deion Sanders and Fred Jones are there to bring him down. Typical isolation play here wide. Actually tall sweep. Good blocking at the point of attack and good cutback right there, but here you see Fred Jones come from his backside position in pursuit. Stops it for very little gain. Farmer's stats last year, that's very impressive considering that he did not have a very good offensive line to play in front of last year. Third down five, Toledo. Wasinski in motion to the far side. 
Florida State comes with five. Bergen's got a man down at the 17-yard line, and that's going to be enough for Toledo first down. Mayhew in there on the stop. Pass completed to the tight end, number 83, Jeffrey Burns, a 6'3", 216-pound senior out of Fostoria, Ohio. Dan Swimmel believes in throwing to the tight end, 57 catches at that position last year. Here we see just a simple clearing pattern in the middle. Executing on first, uh, to complete a first down, and that's going to be necessary against this Florida State defense. They're not going to give up the big play normally with as many talented people as they have back there. Burns getting his first start. Did not play very much last year at all. In fact, the wide receiver core was decimated due to graduation for Toledo. But right now, the Rockets are looking impressive. First down, 17-yard line of Florida State. Farmer. It was originally Thomas Hart that made the first hit. Farmer falls forward for the couple of yards. Hart, 6'1", 287-pound junior out of Winter Garden, Florida. Here we see why Farmer gained 748 yards last year in front of an offensive line that wasn't that good. Takes an initial hit and gains three more. That's a sign of a good back with good balance. Gain a two on the play, second down and eight. You see a shot of Thomas Harp there in your picture. Big guy out of Winter Garden. Had some academic problems, but managed to pass his courses in time to uh, maintain his eligibility. Ball goes off to Perry right up front. And McGowan is there to make the stop. For, uh, for Florida State. Perry, 6'3", 204-pound sophomore out of Mount Vernon, did not expect to start this season. As we said, the normal fullback, Mike Verajon, has an injured knee. In fact, uh, as you mentioned in the pregame show, Keith, Toledo has 10 players uh, out, five starters, five second-team players in this ball game. We go to the end zone, and nobody there. I think Bill Bergen thought Hutchinson was going to go for the corner, but instead he pulled up at about the 10-yard line, so you have the incomplete pass. That means we will see the field goal unit, and that means number eight, Bruce Nichols. Nichols last year was 9 of 15 in the field goal department, was the team's leading scorer. Bill Bergen will hold, and this will be obviously Nichols' first field goal attempt here in the 1986 season. Bergen will hold it right on the 20-yard line, making it a 30-yard field goal attempt. Snap is low, and they won't get it off. <laughs> Remind you once again, the new snapper is Tim Ingles. Only the second time he's ever snapped the football, and it came low that time. When you're an All-American outside linebacker, it's kind of difficult to come in and be a center. The ball is wet, was scooted there on the ground. We see Florida State recovering it. It's hard to tell exactly who was in there first. So it'll be FSU football, their own 22-yard line. Ferguson not going to waste any time. Jumps it out on the flat to Holloman. Holloman avoids one man, and Holloman's on his way. Holloman finally driven out of bounds over there by the right side quarterback, Dexter Clark but not before he gets a Florida State first down down to the 45-yard line of Toledo. Darren Holloman last season, the number two receiver on this ball club. Simple out pattern. This is what you like to get Holloman to do, one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback. Very few in the country can stay with him. He's got excellent speed for a man his size. He doesn't have a great stride. Here we see him cutting up the sidelines. He's going to take a pretty good hit here on the sideline. Back to live action. Ferguson dumps it off the corner. Carter is hammered after about a three or four yard game. As number 40, Mark Patton, the strong side safety, three years starter, as are all of these defensive backs for Toledo, was in there making the stop. Number 19 offense in the nation last year, a little over 400 yards a game. Guess who was number 18? That uh, crowd in Gainesville, University of Florida. 33 yard pass, by the way, from uh, Ferguson to Holloman on the ensuing play. There's those. Tanner Holloman. Tanner Holloman inside the 35, down to the 32-yard line. Florida State starting to chew up some yardage. Paul Sander putting pressure in on Ferguson. Harold McGuire, the free safety. For Toledo makes the stop. Tanner Holloman, the brother, of course, of uh, Darren Holloman. Not only that, the younger brother, although he is much larger in size, very be very hard pressed to find a major college that has two brothers with the talent of Danner, uh, Tanner and Darren Holloman. Both of them are very shifty runners, very low to the ground. Look at the 
the strength here of Tanner is he keeps moving upfield. Excellent tandem in that backfield with Tanner Holloman and Victor Floyd. And of course, he's uh, filling some pretty large shoes this year. Those left by number 42, Cletus Jones, at fullback for Florida State last season. Ferguson on first down, drops it out on the flat once again. This is Herb Gaynor. Gaynor, who had five catches for 87 yards last year, catches his first pass here in 1986. Gaynor has missed a lot of the fall practice due to injury. He's replacing Hassan Jones. He really hasn't been hit in about the last two weeks. That he has not. He's had the proverbial green shirt that a lot of universities use when they don't want contact with a player. He's had a sore leg and a sore shoulder and took a pretty good shot right there and bounced up, which is good news for Florida State. Second down, two yards to go for Florida State, and they are throwing the football with abandon. This one's going to be intercepted again. Off the shoulder pads of Gaynor, and this is a strong safety, Harold McGuire. Dexter Clark was in there putting pressure on Ferguson from the safety position, putting the blitz on, and allowed McGuire to come up with the football. Second turnover for Florida State. Harold McGuire was first team all Mid-American Conference last year. Second team in 1984, you can see why. Toledo has five fifth-year seniors in that defensive backfield. We'll see a close here by the corner real quick. Gaynor can't hold onto the ball. Simple tip drill worked on every day in practice by most teams. Here we see Toledo come up with the interception. First down, 10. Toledo, ball on their own 19-yard line. Farmer. Tripped up by Jones, who was coming in on the blitz. Fred Jones, the number two tackle on the ball club last year, the strong side linebacker for Florida State. And boy, what a fine he is. Number two tackle, as we indicated, 98 tackles last year. Also had three quarterback sacks. And uh, this is a guy who's going to be sorely missed next year, the only senior here on the starting defensive front for Florida State. In fact, Florida State is very young. Only five of the top 44 players will graduate this year for Florida State. They're going to be strong next year as well. Give us to the fullback, Perry. And Perry runs smack dab into Felton Hayes after about three or four yard gain. Gets it up to the 25 yard line. So Toledo will be looking at about a third down four, maybe five situation. Perry not that big at 204 pounds, but he's got a lot of lower body strength. He's got some big thighs and he knows how to keep his head turned upfield towards the goal line. Bear in mind, this is an offense that scored only 12 points a ball game last year and averaged only 250 yards a ball game. But so far, they've been moving the football with relative effectiveness here against Florida State. There goes Berger. Out in the flats, he's got a man. Was he inbounds? No. Eric Hutchinson's upset about it, but the officials say, no, you're out. Deion Sanders over there on the coverage. Eric Hayes. The freshman getting his first action as a collegiate was putting pressure in there on Bergen. Hutchinson, the junior, runs a simple out pattern. Bergen delivers the ball well. We'll see him come down right there. He's got his foot on the line. Good call by the official. So we will see Paul Krim. Look for Florida, excuse me, Dave. Look for Florida State to bring pressure this time. They like to do that on the opponent's end of the end zone. Uh, There's everybody, and that's going to be roughing the kicker. Deion Sanders is going to take it at his own 40-yard line. No, they're going to say no rough in the kicker. They're going to say it was blocked. Sanders fumbles the football. And who's got it? Toledo has the football. Third turnover for Florida State in the first quarter. And I mean to tell you, you think Bobby Bowden's got to be sick right now? Third turnover, and this ball game is only 10 minutes old. Dave, you cannot... You cannot allow an underdog to get momentum early in the first quarter and carry it through. Florida State's in a real good position right now to lose control of the ball game until their talent can uh, can come back. It'd be very interesting right here to see if Toledo goes ahead and opens it up and tries to get in the end zone quick. It'd be very much to their advantage if they should choose to do that and we're successful. 28-yard punt by Krim. Ball at the 39-yard line. Toledo in business. Here goes Bergen again. They're going deep. Nearly intercepted. That one had no chance. They were trying to get it out there to Eric Hutchinson and Martin Mayhew, the left side cornerback, all 5'10, 172 pounds of him, had that one covered like a glove. I think the defensive secondary for Florida State were listening to us. Martin Mayhew honored uh, before the game as a GTE, GTE Academic All American, carrying over a 3 1 in the school business at Florida State, which is quite an accomplishment. We hear a lot about the, the bad of academics. It's, it's good to hear a good story about academics. 
Mayhew, also a track star, as well as is Sammy Smith and several other Florida State Seminoles. Second down, 10 Toledo. Split back this time for the Rockets. Here goes Bergen. Bergen trying to get it off to Farmer, and McGowan hanging on him like glue. McGowan, first team all South Independent last year. Here's a guy that just never seems to make a bad play. He's a very intelligent linebacker. He's beefed up from last year, carrying about 10, 15 more pounds, about 30 pounds more in the bench press. He's got reasonable speed, Dave. He's not a Tim Ingles. He doesn't have flashy speed. That's why they play him on the inside. But if, it, if the football is on the field, he's going to be near it. He's one of those go get them type of people. John Eifer down the ball game for Florida State. And Eifert's another jewel, great All-American former. He's at linebacker now. Here comes a blitz. Bergen gets rid of it. Dumps it out to the tight end. He throws the football, but he's going to call it incomplete. Jeffrey Burns made the reception. No, it was not Burns. My mistake. It's Kelvin Farmer coming out of the backfield. During pregame, or right before the kickoff, Barry mentioned the field. It does drain well, but it will contain water and hold water. And here we see the ball. This is about the fourth time it's been laid on the ground. It is slippery down there. My mistake, I was right the first time. It was Jeffrey Burns, 6'3", senior. So Paul Krim will punt for the third time this quarter. This time, no pressure by Florida State. Krim gets off a line drive, and that's going to go into the end zone. And we've got a flag down at the 35-yard line, and we may have too many men on the field. We saw a Florida State player sprinting to the sidelines and unfortunately did not have sprinter speed. He didn't quite make it. <laughs> so that will give Toledo one more opportunity at it. They were looking at a fourth down and 10, so it will not give them a first down. And uh, I don't believe it will change Dan Simrell's thinking, head coach of Toledo, about kicking this football. So let's see what they do. Of course, Dan Simrell, in his fifth year at Toledo, won three of his four season openers. See some of the uh, the wet Florida State fans on here tonight. Not a hard rain, just kind of a nagging drizzle more than anything else. It's been like this for the past two days. Not particularly cold. It's a very nice evening temperature-wise. It's just kind of just kind of nasty. Tom Rose, your umpire. Joe Pipkin, your line judge. Side judge Dave Small, Wayne Kearns, Paul Jones, and Bob Albertson round out the officiating crew. And of course, your umpire or your referee is Paul Schmidt. And with that, Florida State will decline the penalty, figuring they're better off at their 20-yard line. Krim may indeed drop it in the coffin corner, so Bobby Bowden says, let's take it over first and 10 at our own 20-yard line. Statistically, things are pretty even here. Florida State, uh, 85 total yards, 20 or 64 of those in the air, and Toledo with uh, 97 total yards, so we're, we're pretty close. The difference is that Florida State has three turnovers in the ball game, where Toledo has had none. Randy White to the near side as your wide out. Here goes Ferguson. Lots of time, lots of across the middle. He's got Gainer. Gainer down to the 40-yard line. Dexter Clark there on the, on the stop. 20-yard pass from Chip Ferguson to Herb Gainer. First six or eight passes at Florida State has thrown have been a three-step variety. That particular one was Ferguson dropping back at a full seven-step drop. He gets good protection, lost the ball. That's something he's learned to do that in spring and fall this year, Dave, is get the ball in the air instead of trying to gun it in there. Ferguson will go back to throw again. This is it off to Keith Ross coming out of the backfield. He's in the ball game now, and Ross down to the 37-yard line before Mark Patton was there to bring him down. Paul Sander, the left side tackle for Toledo, was in there putting pressure on Ferguson. Patton last year had 65 tackles, two interceptions, and two fumble recoveries for this Toledo Rocket Ball Club. Bobby Batten was telling us that you know, Toledo really doesn't give you a whole lot defensively. They're very, very solid, particularly that secondary. As you look at Coach Bowden on the sideline, the all-time winningest coach here at Florida State University in his 11th year as a Seminole head coach. Here goes Ferguson. Great catch by Carter, but he couldn't hang on. Incomplete. Harold McGuire was there to make the hit on yeah, Pat Carter. That's one of those kind of passes if you're a tight end and those routes you just hate to run because you know you're going to get belted. You don't like going over the middle. Of course, Pat Carter, over 250 pounds, has got the size. This is why Toledo is good in the secondary. Watch him converge. You're going to see four people around the ball real quick and a fifth one moving in from the side. That's how you play defensive secondary. 
Third down 12, Florida State. Ferguson back to throw. Getting some pressure now. He's got lots of running room. Finds Carter. And Carter nails it down at the 27-yard line at Toledo. Dave, that's why Florida State thinks Pat Carter ought to be an All-American. He only had 14 catches last year because he wasn't used that, that much. Coach Bowden and, and Wayne McDuffie, the offensive coordinator at Florida State, are committed to getting the ball to the tight end. Here we see a clearing pattern. He was held up by the tight end. Sees Ferguson in trouble, moves to the middle, gets himself open, stretches out. Excellent reception. First down 10, Florida State, 47-yard line at Toledo. 25-yard reception by Pat Carter. Here goes Ferguson. This is Keith Ross out of the backfield. Ross gets about four or five yards on first down, down to the 42-yard line of Toledo. Here's a guy, Keith Ross, who all of a sudden just came out of nowhere. Not only is he the sixth best kick return uh, uh, returner in the country, but he rushed for 167 yards against South Carolina. The next week, he came back for 103 against Western Carolina. Not only that, he's the oldest man on the Seminole team. He played minor league baseball for three years before he enrolled in college for the Philadelphia Phillies. Second down, five yards to go. Ferguson's going to drop. Four receivers in the pattern. All day to throw. Carter is there. Fans wanted uh, pass interference, but the officials say no. Mark Patton did a good job of getting his hand over the shoulder of Pat Carter. And you can tell it. Patton is one of the most, is the, one of the best conditioned athletes on this ball club. He bench presses well. He hip sleds well. He's got a 30-inch vertical jump. And you can tell the athletic ability right there. Makes it third down five in a rapidly moving football game from Doe Campbell Stadium. Three minutes, 13 seconds to go here in the first half, or in the first quarter, rather. Give us up the gut for one of the few times that Florida State has run the football all evening long. That might be the second or third time, Keith, I think that somebody's run the football. Coming into the ball game with the wet conditions, it would be quite natural for Coach Bowden to keep the ball on the ground to get the first game victory. However, I think he's committed to himself as well as what he said to the media that Florida State has to throw the ball to be successful this year. Not only that, a change in style. Here we see a fourth and one. Florida State apparently going for it. And they're going to call a timeout to talk about this thing before they do it. Dane Williams on the last uh, carry. Chip Ferguson tries to the sidelines. Two minutes, 46 seconds to go. Florida State and Toledo tied at nothing. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. Dave Reed along with Keith Jones, fourth down and two, Florida State. Reverse to Holloman, and he's going to go a long way. Holloman down to the 30, 29-yard line. How many times did Florida State do that last year? Howard McGuire, the free safety there to bring Holloman down. But I'll tell you, Holloman last year was, only, was the number two receiver, one of the leading rushers, 57 yards, all in reverses. Let's go down to Barry Milligan, Bear. Really not much room to second guess Bobby Bowden on that decision to go for the fourth down play. When Florida State's defense has been on the field, it has completely dominated the Toledo offense. So whether or not they got the first down, which they did, Bobby Bowden still probably made a wise decision, and it turned out to be very wise. This is Keith Ross. Did he get there? No, just shy as Dexter Clark was there to bring him down. Down to the one-yard line, Dexter Clark and Harold McGuire combined to bring Keith Ross down. 29-yard gamper by Keith Ross. And Florida State knocking on the door for what might be their first touchdown here in 1986. Tall sweep action, good blocking at the point of attack. Watch this right here. Parrish Barber, 300 pounds, getting out in front. Ross showing his speed. Just doesn't quite get there. First down goal, Florida State. Ferguson going to sneak for it. Not quite. Jammed up in there by Messrs. Sander, Clarence Good, Brian Gable across the front for Toledo. Ferguson gets about a half a yard on the play. Second down and goal to go once again. One minute, 30 seconds on a rolling clock here in the first quarter. Look to Florida State to probably go wide this time. You normally like to try it up the middle, then try it outside. Dane Williams, your fullback. Keith Ross, your tailback. This is Ross. You're right. They go wide, and Ross is dropped. 
I'll tell you what, Dexter Clark did a yeoman's job of getting around Mark Salva, the right side guard. Clark is not a big guy. Clark is in there at about 200 pounds even. Salva's up there at about 250 and he got around him. Simply out quicks him. When you come up as a defensive back, you gotta get your hands up, get away from the lineman so that you can find the ball carrier. That time Dexter Clark, the 190 pound senior, did an excellent job. Lost a seven on the play. Ball back to the eight yard line. Chief Osceola exhorting his troops on. Instead of third down and half a foot, you got third down and eight now for the Seminoles. Ferguson drops back, looking for somebody in the end zone. And what can't hang on? Randy White, who had not caught a pass for Florida State until he caught four in the Gator Bowl last year, had that one in his hands and couldn't quite hang on to it. Good position by Clark that time. Two big plays in a row. Doubtful. Dave, whether Randy White would have come down in bounds anyway. So we will see Derek Smith, the most prolific kicker in Florida State history. Last year, he was 18 out of 25 in the field goal department, including three 51 yarders. This one will be from 24, and it's good. So after a quarter where Florida State couldn't hang on the football, they do get on the scoreboard. It's Florida State three, Toledo nothing. We're back right after this play. Renza Hewley, 20, 25 yard line, and Hewley almost breaks another one, gets it down to the 35, and Toledo has had good field position throughout the first part of this ball game. You can win that beautiful $2,400 rug by answering this trivia question. The Seminoles will play Nebraska next week. The question is, what is the Seminoles record against Nebraska in their history? If you know the answer to that question, you send it to SCN Trivia, care of Continental Cable Vision, 5934 Richard Road, Jacksonville, Florida, 32216. Send it to the programming department. If your answer is correct, we'll put your name into a hat for a drawing to win that rug at halftime of the Florida-Florida State football game. Bergen drops it out in the flat to Hutchinson, and Hutchinson receives it for, well, about two or three yards. That's really about it. Deion Sanders on the coverage. Eric Hayes was in there uh, putting pressure on Bill Bergen. Hayes playing with a dislocated left ring finger, Dave. He actually had surgery on it, has a pin in it, has a special cast he's playing with. Hayes was actually number one all spring, but eventually lost his starting job due to the injuries. And with that, the first quarter is history. It's been a sloppy one, but Florida State dominating offensive play here in the first quarter, leading this football game three to nothing. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. I'm Dave Reed along with Keith Jones. Second quarter action getting set to get underway as T Tulsa looking, or Tulsa, Toledo, we'll get it right, looking at second down and six. And they're going to have the first down as Bergen drops it off on the flat down to the 48-yard line. And that's a first down. Toledo, the tight end, Jeffrey Burns, they're making the stop. Burns spent the last three years back up as a backup now has his opportunity to start and making the most of it. 11-yard reception that time. First down, Toledo. 157 yards in total offense for Florida State so far. Toledo just cracked the 100-yard barrier. Bergen gives off the farmer. He's going to hold on the left side, but boy, is it close in a hurry. He was leveled down there by Greg Newell and Stanley Shiver, the two safeties for Florida State. Shiver, I tell you, Shiver's a designated blister, and he is probably the hardest hitter on his Florida State club, and he hits you, you know it. That he is. He plays a strong safety position, but he's 197 pounds, so he plays like a linebacker. Here we see Terry Warren being assisted off the field. Looks like a possible left ankle. Or maybe even a hamstring. Warren has had hamstring problems throughout fall practice. 14 minutes, five seconds to go. We'll be back. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines, serving Seminole fans with convenient flights to the Northeast. Come fly with Eastern. Second down and five, Toledo. Ball to Florida State, 49-yard line. Burns comes in motion near side. Pitch goes to Farmer on the right. Farmer is not going to make it. And you can kind of take a pick. Paul McGowan comes up with a football. Let's see, is it Florida State football? Yes. And now we've got a little altercation down there. McGowan, I think that thing just kind of squirmed out. McGowan came up with it. And now everybody trying to get into the act now. Eric Hayes is incensed. Flags fly everywhere. 
Another flag. It was uh, Eric Hayes for Florida State. And Toledo's number 78, Jack Montgomery, were really insisted each other for some reason. I don't know what went on down there in that pileup. We're going to get some ejections for that, Dave. I think you're right. While we try and sort this thing out, 13 minutes and 40 seconds to go, you're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. We'll be back. We are now at commercial break five. Coming up on commercial break five, it will be a network break where we return at the top of page two. Ejections for both ball clubs, and we'll get the uh, principals in it momentarily here for you. Chief Osceola rolling the sidelines, but right now the more important thing, Bobby Bowden talking to referee Paul Schmidt trying to find out what's going on. I'll tell you something, Dave, about Coach Bowden at this particular point right now. He's not going to think that much about it, and I'm sure Dan Swinwell is going to do the same thing. But when they look at these films, there's going to be a couple of people, as soon as we find out who these principals are, they're going to be a little bit disciplined, quote, unquote, because of this. I know that the CFA coaches have discussed amongst themselves the violence that sometimes is taking place on the sidelines, and I know for a fact that Coach Bowden doesn't want to see, ha see it happen. And uh, I don't think they'll think about it right now, but I think in the future, uh, specifically Sunday during films or next week, that a few things are going to be said about it. All right, Florida State first down and 10, 49-yard line, their own. Seminoles have won nine straight season openers under Bobby Bowden. Only loss they have ever had in a season opener was way back in Bobby Bowden's first year when they lost to Memphis State. In fact, the Seminoles will open every season at home here at Doe Campbell Stadium until 1994. This season, they're going to find out just how good they are in a real hurry because next week, it's Nebraska on national television, North Carolina, a very improved Tar Heel club, and then up to Ann Arbor, another national televised game against the Michigan Wolverines. Pitch out goes to Ross. He's got a hole on the right side. Ross bounces off one defender and drops it down to the 42-yard line of Toledo. Brian Jones, the weak side cornerback, and Tim Inglis, first time we've called that number tonight on the stop. Here we see David Palmer leading up inside. Good block upside. Salva, number 63, good block on the linebacker. Herb Gaynor doesn't quite get there in time, or Keith Ross may have been sprung for the whole, whole nine yards. Look at that average last year. And two games back-to-back -back Ross had. Seminoles are loaded at the tailback position. Sammy Smith, Victor Floyd, Keith Ross, all of those guys could start for most ball clubs. Tony Hersel jumping off at nose guard for Florida State. That young man right there is going to see some action for Florida State this year, you can bet. Danny McManus, of course, the starter for Florida State last year, played the first three ball games and then suffered two concussions. Turned out to be an inner ear problem. Then was hurt by the flu in practice, and he has not played since the third game of last year. That he has not, but I'll tell you an interesting thing about McManus. He's a game player. Even if he goes without a week or two of practice he's still able to come in and play in the game just like he's been there uh, and our Florida State's very fortunate to have him in a backup position to Chip Ferguson he missed eight days of practice with a flu he got one day of practice in prior to this football game tonight first down 10 Florida State <laughs> Come on, David Palmer. check it Dane Williams touchdown Florida State one freshman out of Fruitland Park. I tell you what, Chip Ferguson fooled everybody, including the play-by-play -play guy. 36-yard run for a touchdown. Derek Smith is still perfect from the PAT standpoint. And Florida State all of a sudden is out to a 10-point lead. 12 minutes, 36 seconds to go, and the Seminoles out in front by 10. We'll be back. Derek Smith gets set to boot it away for Florida State following the 36-yard run by Dane Williams. Williams has carried the ball twice tonight for 38 yards and Renza Hewley back at his own five yard line once again. He nearly broke it the first two times. This time the Seminoles do a little bit better job of covering the kick as Hewley gets down to about the 27 yard line before uh, being dropped at that point by uh, Florida State's Brian Davis. 5'11 junior out of Panama City is Davis. 22 yard return. Here's the trivia question once again. What is the Seminoles record against Nebraska? 
And if you want, if you know the answer to that question, here's your address. SEM Trivia, care of Continental Cable Vision, 5934 Richard Road, Jacksonville, Florida, 32216. Send your answer there. Your name will be thrown into a hat. We'll have a drawing at halftime of the Florida Florida State game. Give us your name, your address, and the cable company to which you subscribe. Also include your phone number. We'll put your name in the hat, and hopefully you can win that beautiful $2,400 rug. Take another look at this scamper by Dane Williams. Boy, I tell you, watch the fake by Ferguson. He just fooled everybody. My apologies to the Williams family up in Fruitland Park. I thought that was David Palmer running the ball. Dane Williams, number 49, takes it into the right corner of the end zone. It appeared that he was down. Chip Ferguson continued with the fake. It appeared that Dane was down and sprung right on out of there. Nice touchdown gallop, a happy man. Florida State penalized for offsides on the kickoff. New Rule Collins football this year. Of course, we're kicking off from the 35-yard line, as we do in the pros nowadays, to try and get a little more spark in the kickoff return department. The Alabama-Ohio State game uh, this past Thursday night was an indication it's going to work. Taken by one of the up men, this is Brian Jones. And down inside the 40-yard line. Oh, my. Lateral off to Hewley, and Hewley takes it all the way down inside the 40. And again, Toledo with excellent field position. Wow. I tell you, the kickoff especially teams for Toledo have been very, very impressive tonight. That they have, a little bit of gadgetry right there. I wasn't quite certain whether he fumbled the ball or intended to lateral the ball. Whatever the, whatever the reason, uh, good field position, Florida State 45. 12 minutes, 22 seconds to go, second quarter. Burns your tight end, Hutchinson. That is a wide receiver to the far side. Give us up the gut. Big Gerald Nichols is there along with Thomas Hart. Hart. And nobody goes anywhere. John Perry ran in just a wall of Florida State defenders. Gerald Nichols in on that tackle. Probably as dominating a lineman as you'll find. He's the only returning starter on the defensive line. Honorable mention All-American. Of course, led the Knowles in sacks the last two seasons. He's just kind of a nasty guy to be around. He really is on the football field. A nice guy off. How many times have you heard that? Oh, yeah. New quarterback in the ballgame is A.J. Sager. And Sager comes in and rifles ones to Burns down at the 31-yard line. Now you can see why, not Burns rather, but Bob Wasinski making his first grab. Wasinski, 6'2", junior out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. Felton Hayes in on the stop for Florida State. Steve Gabbard putting pressure on A.J. Sager. Sager, 6'3", senior out of Kirkersville, Ohio, completes a 13-yard pass. He was the quarterback two years ago when the Rockets won the Mid-American Conference and went on to the California Bowl. So this is a very capable quarterback. He and Bergen are both roommates and a very, very good fans, very close friends. And here's the backup tailback, David Wars, a 6'2", 186-pound sophomore out of Waukesan, Ohio. Now, this is a guy who has really been pushing Kelvin Farmer for the starting job. He returned to fall practice in the best condition of anybody on this ball club as you look at Deion Sanders. Freshman red shirt last year, didn't see much action, but the guy runs a 4-6-40, and he is really going to push Kelvin Farmer for that starting position before the season's out. Gets five yards on that play, second down, five rockets. 28-yard line, Florida State. Sager being pressured by Warren. Thumps it out to Hutchinson, too low. Credit Terry Warren that time for putting the pressure in on A.J. Sager. Warren, probably the most, well, is most the, the most experienced outside linebacker. We'll get it out. 19 solo tackles, 25 assists last year, and primarily a backup role, but he's moved into the starting outside linebacker position this year. Third down, five, Rockets. Here comes the blitz. Sager, pitch out, roars. No way. Eric Crone on the stop for Florida State. Crone, the big play guy, might be the best athlete overall on the defensive line for Florida State. Look at Dan Simrell. This season, as we say, at uh, University of Toledo, you might say he's kind of an all Toledo guy. He attended the school. He played on the football team. He's the first alumni to ever coach football at the University of Toledo. Bruce Nichols will come on to hold of the kick. Bill Bergen will hold for Nichols at the 35-yard line. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt for Bruce Nichols. This will come from the right side hash mark. 
He will be going with the wind and does have a range. Snap is good, no way. Kick is way low. I think somebody got a hand on that one. So that kick goes away. It's Florida State 10, Toledo nothing. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. Back to live action here at Florida State, Stoke Campbell Stadium. Florida State gained four yards on first down, second down, six for the Seminoles. Ferguson gets it off to Sammy Smith, who's in the ball game for the first time. Smith eludes one tackler, runs around the right side, and gets a yard before being dropped by Harold McGuire. All right, let's talk about Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith is one of those highly recruited players in Florida State history, All-American from Apopka High last year. Played in three ball games and then received a medical red shirt. And he really has not had the opportunity to play much here at Florida State. And he doesn't get it on this play. Miscued by Ferguson and or Sammy Smith. He gets tied up in the middle. But we see his great athletic ability. He gets outside. He does possess good speed. But, of course, Toledo in their pursuit's got too many angles. Brings him down for a very short game. Sammy Smith has really been banged up in practice. We'll talk about that in a minute. Did he catch it? Yes. Pat Carter, 42-yard line. Steve Huffman, the linebacker, was out there isolated on Pat Carter. No way that's going to be a good matchup. Pat Carter, just a junior here at Florida State, and the pro scouts are already looking at him at the tight end position. That they are, and again, we hate to beat that dead horse. We see another example of why Pat Carter is so highly thought of. He's got size, he's got speed, and as we saw there, great concentration and great hands. Pro scouts said he's the second best tight end in the nation among the junior class. Here goes Sammy Smith. 11-yard catch by Carter, by the way. It's first down Florida State. That play was. Smith gets five. Mike McCreary on the stop for Toledo. Sammy Smith has really been snake bit. He hasn't had a full day of practice in seven weeks, Sammy. He lost 12 pounds the first day of practice due to dehydration. Had to put him in a hospital. Then he hurt his ribs. Then he caught the flu. And a poor guy <laughs> is going to play about a quarter tonight because he's just not going to have the stamina to play the whole ball game. Bobby Bowden had him listed as starting tailback, and he will undoubtedly be just that once he gets back up to full speed. David Palmer. Inside handoff from Ferguson on a second down and six, and Palmer's going to be very close to the first down. Palmer and Williams both very much the same. Coach Bowden likes a big fullback in there. That's why it was a little bit different when Tanner Holloman was named as the starting fullback. Not since Mark Lyles has been at Florida State has Florida State had that blocking type of back for their tailback. With both Dane Williams and, and David Palmer, 48 and 49, you've got uh, almost clones out there. You can throw either one of them in at the same time. So we'll bring the sticks out and take a look at it. Going to be about uh, six inches shy, says Paul Schmidt. Florida State amassing a lot of yards, 220 total yards, 132 via the pass here in the first half, which has about eight minutes left to go in it. Seminoles will be looking at third down and, well, about six inches. David, don't be surprised if Florida State doesn't come out and throw the ball here. I Coach was just Bowden, about to ask you. Coach Bowden has committed to trying to, to open up his offense. He may not choose to do it here, but don't be surprised if he does. Sammy Smith, David Palmer in the backfield for Florida State. Tell you, Florida State is loaded in the backfield. Holloman, Smith, Williams, Floyd, Palmer, Ross, and they got a freshman by the name of Reno Fells who's going to make some noise too. Chip Ferguson dives across down to about the 46-yard line, and that'll be enough for a Florida State first down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven running backs, and you still go, you might go eight or nine deep at this running back position for Florida State. They really have the talent back there. With that they do, and not only that, all of them are of the type that Coach Bowden wants. The tailbacks are not as big as the fullbacks. Obviously, the fullbacks are big and strong, but the tailbacks all have speed. Herb Gaynor, Jaron Holloman, your wide outs on first down 10 for the Seminoles. Ferguson drops back, looks right, now getting some pressure. Let's go of that and just throws it out of bounds. Probably a smart thing to do. Dexter Clark was out there and had Herb Gaynor covered like a glove. Tony Hersel 
the nose guard, middle guard for Toledo, 6'2", 234 pound freshman out of Eastlake, was in there putting pressure on Chip Ferguson. Ferguson's numbers last year, he did that in about five ball games. 990 yards, eight interceptions, but also 11 touchdowns, and what a ball game he had against Oklahoma State in the Gator Bowl. 20 out of 43, 338 yards, two touchdowns, MVP in that ball game. Here goes Sammy Smith. Finds a little hole up the middle for about four yards. Gets it down close to the 40-yard line. Ferguson's completed 13 tonight for 97 yards. Very composed young man, Dave. A lot of confidence. Some people would characterize him as being slightly cocky. The difference between cocky and confidence is running your mouth, and Ferguson does not run his mouth. Some of those last year, you want to get that third down conversion up to about 40%. That's really where you want it. 36-2 is, is not bad. I'm sure Bobby Bowden will like it a little bit better. Third down and six. Sammy Smith. Touchdown, Florida State. Down to the Toledo 34-yard line. Here's the flashes we're talking about. All during his career, although it's only been a year at Florida State, everybody's talked about Sammy Smith's potential, and that he has. Here we see him moving outside, Palmer leading up inside, sealing off on the linebacker, and there's the flashes. At Apopka High, his senior year, in seven ball games, he rushed for 1,210 yards and 16 touchdowns. Seven ball games. Ferguson fakes off the Smith. He's got Holloman wide up and down there in the flat and nails it. Now McGuire was giving him way too much room. McGuire played in the deep zone. And just gave Darren or Darren Holloman entirely too much room to catch football. All the receivers have been banged up, but Tanner Holloman is the, the most healthy. Here we see him settling in on a curl pattern. Ferguson throwing the ball in hard. Takes a good shot, comes out of the ball game. 14 yard pass completion from Ferguson to Darren Holloman. First down, Florida State, 21 yard line, Toledo. Ferguson, Sammy Smith. Lose one tackle now, ball scored for about seven more yards. Everything you've heard about Sammy Smith is just about true. John Bowser, backup, strong safety, had him in his arms. Smith now has six runs, 200, 200, 24 yards. I'll get it out. Every back can get to the line and take one shot. It's the good ones that can get off and get back up. We saw Parker doing that earlier in the first quarter for Toledo. Here we see Sammy Smith continuing that. Scott Damari in the ball game for Florida State is a wide receiver. He is split to the left side on second down and three. Ferguson up the gut. Down to about the 11 yard line. David Palmer, your ball carrier. Tony Hersell. Tony Hersell on the stop for Toledo. Did he get there? I don't think so. He's going to be about a yard shy. Third down one. Send in the second tight end. Galen White coming into the ball game. Galen playing with a lower back injury. The tight end for Florida State. They'll go with a two tight end alignment with Carter on one side and Galen White on the other. Check it. Not Carter, but they send in the number two tight end, Tom O'Malley. 6'3", sophomore out of Darien, Connecticut. Third down one. Ferguson going to throw for it. Dumps it out of the flats. Complete. David Palmer gets his first reception in 1986. John Bowser on the stop for Toledo. Palmer's another excellent student. The highest GPA on the ball club. That he is. He's a good hard-nosed football player. You're going to see Toledo in good coverage right now. Palmer's not wide open. They closed quickly. They made the first down, but not by much. First down, goal to go, Florida State. 4.14 to go, first half. Ferguson being pressured, drops it out of the flat, incomplete. Keith Dunbar from the left side in position, actually the quick end as they call it at Toledo. 6'2", junior out of Delta, Ohio, was in there putting pressure on Ferguson, forced him to throw it incomplete. Be second down and goal to go from the seven yard line. Herb Gator comes to one side, Holloman to the near side. Ferguson with Sammy Smith and David Palmer in the backfield. Here goes Palmer. Palmer breaks through. Touchdown, Florida State. <laughs> 
David Palmer just left Paul Sander, 230 pounds, and Brian Gable, 260 pounds, in his wake as he went for 15 yards, actually for seven yards, and a touchdown. Palmer's rushed for 15 tonight, and it's 16 to nothing, Florida State. Same play as Dane Williams scored on earlier for Florida State, just a different person. And a little shorter in distance. Derek Schmidt, 86 consecutive extra points at Florida State. Lewis Berry to hold, snap spot, making 87. And Chief Osceola and the fans here at Florida State are loving it. Four minutes, one second to go here in the first half, and Florida State out front, 17 to nothing. Kipoff goes to Hewley, and Hewley juts outside, eludes one tackle, but is finally dropped by Martin Mayhew down at the 24-yard line for Florida State, so Toledo takes over first and 10 at that point. I'll tell you what, with the odds that Dan Simrell was looking at here, a four and seven ball club, uh, an offense that has been less than spectacular coming into the Lions den here at Florida State. If I'm behind 17 to nothing in the ball game, I'm not having too bad a night right now. I'm gonna air it out, especially with Florida State able to run the ball up the middle like they have been successfully here. We see David Palmer putting a hand down, getting into the end zone. You've got to put it in the air big time now. 19-yard return by Uli. Here goes Sager. Dumps it out to the tight end, Jeff Burns, and Burns down to the 29-yard line. Game of about five on the play. Let's say hi to Barry Milligan. You may have noticed Darren Holliman limping a little bit, favoring that right ankle on the last few plays of Florida State's touchdown drive. There's good reason for that. On the third down pass he caught to convert to the first down for the Seminoles, he was hit very hard and twisted that right ankle. He came off for just a couple of plays. The trainers on the sidelines applied some new tape and didn't do really anything else. Should Florida State be able to maintain the 17-point advantage, it's likely Holloman won't see as much action in the second half. There. Here goes Sager being pressured and got it down by Steve Gabbard. Steve Gabbard getting his chance to start. Played mostly on special teams last year. That he did. He's got Eric Hayes playing in front of him. Hayes being injured. Gabbard got the start. He's 265 pound sophomore out of North Carolina. All the talk about Nichols this year, justifiably so in the preseason. We forgot about the other two tackle, or the nose guard and tackle position in Florida State, and Gabbard's a good one. He and Hayes are going to fill that tackle position very well in tandem. Bob Wasinski, wide receiver to the far side, Hutchinson to the near side, Sager looking at third down and three. Rolling right, now got some time. He can run for it if he wanted to, but elects to throw and gets the first down. He rifled that one in there to John Perry, and he was surrounded by a host of Florida State defenders led by John Eford. It appeared that Sager had running room to run for the first town. Instead, he opted to throw to Perry. Florida State conversion, but not before first down. First and 10, 40-yard line, Toledo. Perry's first reception is a Toledo Rocket. 2.48 to go, and the Rocket's looking to get something on the scoreboard prior to the first half. Indy, they're not going to do it that way, however. That front line of Florida State has just been overpowering Toledo so far. Perry goes for nothing. Sager's numbers back last year, 1,335 yards. He actually took over for, uh, he started out as the starter last year, was replaced four games into the schedule by Bergen. Bergen got hurt. Sager came back and finished up the schedule. He had a pretty good numbers. The problem was, was the INT figures you saw. 12 INTs last year. He's thrown for 29 yards tonight. Tries to luff that one off to Jeff Burns, the tight end, and Terry Warren in there putting pressure along with Thomas Hart. That is a flag on a play. I believe we're going to have pa uh, roughing the passer. I think you're right. War Warren was close, but not that close. Nailed him too late. I think that's only the second flag we've seen tonight. That we have, and those usually, as, as every viewer will know in a first game, you usually see a lot of penalties, especially jumping offside and things like that. We haven't seen that. Been very well-schooled teams out there, even in the wet. Sager jumps back. Warren gets in there just a little bit too late, it appears. Pass under thrown. Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to mark it off against Toledo, Keith. Somebody may have been holding on to someone on the line. I stand corrected. Yeah, let's see what they call. Holding, right going against Toledo. So that'll back it up 10 yards. Holding 
Two minutes and nine seconds to go. Toledo's going to look at second down and 19. Florida State totally dominating things now. 273 total yards to Toledo's 87. Toledo being held to only 23 yards rushing here in the first half. Sager being blitzed. Dumps it out in the flats and got a man. Way shy of the first down, however. David Wars, the tailback, coming out of the backfield. Gets it back up to the 34-yard line of Toledo. Some of the Florida State performing Chiefs on the sidelines, ready for halftime. With two minutes left in the in the second quarter, I don't like to see Toledo do anything foolish. They may try to throw the ball intermediate, but I don't look for them to go long. That's about one point of ball game. You saw that graphic. 13 points in the second quarter. They really had some problems. Florida State, on the other hand, has dominated second quarter action. Oh, my! Somebody wide open down there. That's a first down, Toledo. Somebody blew a coverage. I can tell you that. John Perry coming out of the backfield should be isolated on a linebacker, and somebody missed it. That they did. Florida State came with pressure that time. Obviously, someone did not pick Perry coming up out of the backfield. And with that, 1 minute 51 seconds to go. Florida State leading 17-0. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines, the airline with more flights to more fun vacations. This winter, visit a Caribbean island with Eastern, the leader in service to all the Americas. First down 10, Sager drops it out down to the 42-yard line. Pass is complete to Hutchinson. That last pass, incidentally, to John Perry was for 28 yards, and they needed about uh, 19 for the first down. Felton Hayes making the stop on Hutchinson. Hayes, the starter for a linebacker, played every game last year on the special teams and saw a lot of action at backup linebacker. Second down, six Toledo. They're going to have to hurry. A minute six to go. They still have all the timeouts available to them. Second to the flats, and I think he might have been trying to hit the headlinesman more than the receiver down there. I'm not, so, I'm not so sure Paul Schmidt wasn't back there for telling him pull. Gerald Nichols putting pressure on A.J. Sager, and that's a good reason to throw it towards the sidelines. Toledo needs to continue what they've done to get here, intermediate routes. If they can put seven points on the ball game, they're in on board in this ball game. They're not that far behind if they go in that way at halftime. Second down, six, just under a minute to go. Sager drops Pratt, fires it across. Great play by Sanders. Sanders just knocked it out of the hands of Hutchinson. If Hutchinson had gotten around Newell, that could have gone a long way. You know, we talked about Tim Ingles and all his talent. Here's a guy, number two, Deion Sanders, that's got more talent than anybody on that field. He also returns punt. That time you see him step right in front of the receiver, bat the ball away. I'll tell you, that is a heck of a battle at the cornerback position. We'll talk about this after the kick. Paul Krim, back at his own 40-yard line, has yet to get a decent kickoff tonight. Although that was going to be effective as it drops inside the 15 and down to the 14 yard line. We talk about that cornerback battle. Bobby Bowden Company got a nice problem here. You got Deion Sanders, Eric Williams, and Tracy Sanders battling for the two cornerback positions. Any one of them could start. Not excluding Martin Mayhew. That's true. You've got four. And with Sanders, you've got probably the biggest one back there, the one that Mickey Andrews would like to use. The other three won't let him get in. Sanders, as you indicated, probably has the most talent, but of course, Eric Williams and Mayhew and even Tracy Sanders have been here longer. That they have. Experience in that secondary is also oh important. Pleasant problem, though. 36 yard punt by Krem. Florida State may elect to just go ahead and sit on this thing and go in with a 17 point lead. No, they're not. Ferguson going to go for it. Oh! Just a little bit short. Randy White, the intended receiver, Dwayne Fletcher, the backup weak side cornerback, is in there on the coverage. You can see how dominating Florida State was in the second quarter last season. And I'll tell you what, here's another number that'll kind of shock you. We'll have to wait because I can't find it. <laughs> Film at 11. 39 seconds to go. Sammy Smith, and Smith down to the 19-yard line. Sammy Smith, the ball carrier, stopped by number 93, Tom Eaglin. 
Timeout, Florida, Florida, Florida State. Florida State's going to call a timeout. Okay. 29 seconds left on the board. 29 seconds to go. Let's keep it right here. Florida State out front, 17 to nothing. And totally dominating things from an offensive standpoint. 273 yards to 112 in total offense. Sammy Smith, seven carries tonight, including that one, for 33 yards. We'd like to welcome all of our affiliates, of course, on the Sunshine Cable Network, and big hello to Tampa Cable down in Tampa, Florida. Ken Sheik, programming director, 38,000 subscribers down there. Big hi to all you folks down there. Part of a network of about 2 million subscribers all across the state of Florida. This is our inaugural telecast on SCN, coming to you from Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. And we'll be bringing you four more Florida State games, maybe five, depending on what the right situation dictates to us later on here in the fall. But right now, Florida State looking at third down and five with 29 seconds to go. Pitch goes to Sammy Smith. Smith across the 24 to the 25-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a Florida State first down. And with that, I believe the Seminoles are going to call a timeout once again. Ferguson will trot to the sidelines. Excuse me, Dave. Several times tonight we've seen some altercations, and you you have to look at this. To, Toledo and Florida State meeting for the first time, you'd wonder why in the world they didn't like each other. Our SCN Seminole hey, schedule looks like this. We've got a few weeks off before we'll be back here at Doe Campbell on October the 11th as the Seminoles will take on Tulane the following week, Wichita State, Southern Mississippi on November the 15th, and, of course, that big grudge match against the University of Florida Gators all of that will be seen here on the Sunshine Cable Network, 11.30 p.m., all across the network. And depending on your cable company, will be seen one more time during the week. Call your local cable company for details. First down, 10, Florida State, 22 seconds to go here in the first half. Let's see if Bobby Bowden decides to air this one out. He's got Scott Damari down here to the near side as a wide receiver. Going to pitch it to Sammy Smith. Smith has got some running room. Smith gets it down to the 43-yard line. Dwayne Fletcher in on the stop for Toledo. Got some help from Phil Brown as well. Tall sweep action. How many times are we going to say it? David Palmer appears out blocking up front, pulling guard. Good block out on the wing by the wide receiver, and then Toledo in pursuit. Good game by Sammy Smith. 17-yard run by Smith. Here goes Sammy once again into Toledo territory. Down to the 46-yard line. One second. Steve Huffman on the stop. And the first half is history. Florida State tried to call the timeout. Let's see if they got it in in time. And the officials talking about it here at midfield. Appear to have a flag down. Appear to have two flags. One back at the line of scrimmage and then one at the tackle. Holding. Florida State. And, of course, the uh, half cannot end on a defensive penalty. It can on the offense, however, and that is apparently what will happen. Sammy Smith, 10 rushes, 67 yards, and the first half is history. Florida State has dominated, but they're not as far as front, not as far out front as they'd like to be. They lead Toledo 17 to nothing. You stay with us. We'll be back with our halftime show in just a moment. You're watching Florida State football. Check, 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 check. Seven on will receive and defend the South Goal. Second half gets set to get underway. I'm Dave Reed along with Keith Jones. We're glad you're with us all over the Sunshine Cable Network as Toledo will boot it away. Bruce Nichols to kick off. Darren Holloman and Keith Ross deep for Florida State. Nichols gets a very short kick, and we've got flags all over the field. Now let's hold things up and see what happens. Keith Ross trying to find out what's going on, too. Ross, the number six return, re returning kickoff man uh, in Division 1A. 24.6 yards a kickoff. And uh, you can bet that you're going to see him in that position quite a bit this fall. 
Quite a story, Keith Ross. You mentioned that he played with the Philadelphia Phillies, played professional baseball for several years. And as we indicated, really came on against South Carolina and Western Carolina uh, at the end of the season last year. Dave, it's funny how sometimes in a stadium things other than football will affect you. That time the clock operator had no time on the clock. That's the reason they had to hold up play. All right, we'll try it one more time, and this will be Ross. Ross down to the 30, 32 yard line. That one didn't go 24 yards, but not a bad return either way. So the Seminoles will take over in pretty good field position, 35 yard line, no road. 17 nothing, Florida State. Ball on their own 34 yard line. Statistically doesn't look that bad. Time of possession fairly even. Look at the yards rushing, however. Florida State dominating there as well as the passing yardage. Chip Ferguson, 14 out of 21 for 150 yards. Turnovers, that's what's kept Toledo in the ball game. Florida State turned it over three times. Give us up to Vic Floyd, and Floyd across the 40 down to the 42 yard line. Gain of about seven on the play. Second down and three. I guess the big stat is the ability of Florida State to run the football. We knew we could throw, but that offensive line doing the job of getting, opening the holes for Mr. Smith, Floyd, Ross, and Palmer. That they have, Dave. Not only that, to run the ball with the big play. Dane Williams, some 30-yard touchdown round. David Palmer, six or seven up the middle. Also the protection of Ferguson. He's thrown the ball short, but he's completed 14 out of 21. That's a sign of good protection. Second down, three yards to go. Seminoles ball on their own 41-yard line. Ferguson gives it up to God and nothing doing as Tim Ingles is in there to make the stop. Along with some help from Steve Huffman on Tanner Holliman. Really haven't had a chance to talk too much about Tim Ingles. We hadn't called his number that much last night. Or this tonight, All-American candidate, first team All-Mid-America Conference last year. 157 tackles, easily to lead the team. And um, overall, the team's best athlete. Move from inside linebacker to the outside linebacker or rush linebacker this year to compensate for some of the injuries. Ferguson trying to set up a screen and does so at the Floyd. Floyd has got some running room, and Floyd is finally corralled by Mark Patton down at the 49-yard line. That will be a third down play, and that'll be enough for Seminole first down. We talked about it earlier on the second, the second quarter when we had third and one that Coach Bowden may choose to throw the ball. This time he does. We've got flare patterns by both. Ferguson's looking to our left and throws back right to Victor Floyd. He turns it up the middle where there's some daylight for just enough to get the first down. Excellent decision by Floyd as to which direction to go that time. Pitch goes to Floyd on the right side. He's got a wall of blockers ahead of him. Somebody did a good job of submarining and getting down to Vic Floyd. It was Ingles. Floyd. Floyd carries down just about the 45, call it the 46-yard line, gain a five on the play. Second down and five, Florida State. Of course, the Seminoles next week look straight on it to the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a team they beat 17-12 in Lincoln last year. You can bet the Tom Osborne and company are waiting with bated breath to see these guys once again. It's payback time out there in Lincoln. Here goes Floyd along the left side, and Floyd across the 40 and down to the 39-yard line. Harold Lincoln McGuire Lincoln. on the stop for Toledo. McGuire, the number two tackler overall in the squad behind Tim Ingles last year, as you look at Vic Floyd. Florida State content to keep it on the ground so far. Pitch wide. Good blocking up front. Good running by Floyd. We see Darren Holman get his leg pinned right there. Very nearly a serious injury. Floyd rushed for 619 yards last year, a 6.9 rushing average. That's a big average. Tanner Holloman, nothing doing. Dunbar, along with Sander. Tanner Angles Holloman. in there also for Toledo. Got some help from Brian Gable as well. Stop made by number 94, Paul Sandor. We're talking about Victor Floyd. This is a guy who played a lot of last year. You see Brian Gable, the junior out of Richfield on that stop. Played a lot last year, really came on at the tail end of the season. He played so well, and yet you get a guy like Sammy Smith coming in, and Floyd does not want to lose that starting job to Sammy Smith. I mean, he really doesn't. He made, he's made it known in practice in the day. Floyd up the middle, 35, 33-yard line. 
Huffman in there on the stop for taking it up. Talk about commitment, Dave, and wanting to keep your position. Victor Floyd played at 177 last year. He's playing at 195 this year. I think the fact that Sammy Smith weighs about 212 had something to do with that. He rushed for 212 yards against South Carolina last year. Fourth best rushing total in Florida State history. Third down, four yards to go, Seminoles. Give us the Floyd draw play that fooled everybody. Floyd down to the 22-yard line, and Floyd, the flag, Jim Henley was looking at the officials and saying, hey, somebody throw a flag here. Huffman and Patton on the stop for Toledo. Henley taking on Henley taking on a talented role there, both as a zebra as well as a player, signaling that uh, face mask. Here we see good blocking. This is actually a counter play, cutback play. Number 39 there for Toledo grabs a hold of the face mask, and Steve Huffman's going to wish he hadn't done that. Half the distance to the goal. Gives the Seminoles first down at the 17. Face mask penalty against Toledo. First down on Seminoles. Third Correction. penalty on Toledo, cost him 20 yards. Correction, Dave. They, they considered that an incidental as opposed to a major. Okay. It's a five-yard penalty, still first down at the 17-yard line. Victor Floyd, four rushes, 30 yards. Virtually all of that coming here in the second half. Ferguson looking deep, got a man in the corner, nearly intercepted. I tell you, Brian Jones was back there step for step with Randy White. Nearly picked that one off. Keith Dunbar putting pressure in on Ferguson. Randy White missed a lot of practice due to the injured Fred shoulder. Torres. My name is Mike Hunt. He hadn't caught a pass, as we indicated, until he caught four in the Gator Bowl last year. And he moved it for flank and a wide receiver, of course, with the injury problems. Philip Bryant, number one wide receiver, I guess you could say, for Florida State, as look at the stat on Randy White, is not playing tonight due to the injury. Herb Gaynor's not 100% either. Tanner Holloman off the left side for Florida State. Tanner Holloman's 12-yard line. Philip Ryan injured his left ring finger, same as Eric Hayes on the defensive side of the ball. His required major surgery, is expected back in four to six weeks. Actually, Bryan is probably the most exciting of the receiver course for Florida State because of his speed. He's a great track man and possesses great speed. Seminoles will miss him until he returns into the lineup. Florida State offense starting to click now. On third down and six, they took the opening kickoff and have kept it for the better part of five minutes and 30 seconds. Here comes a reverse. Randy White couldn't hang on to it, and Toledo gets it back. Vic Floyd gave it off to Randy White. They missed the exchange, and it was Keith Dunbar, I do believe, falling on the football for Toledo. So the Rockets dodge a bullet, and Florida State turns it over for the fourth quarter this White, evening. Dunbar, the 6'2 junior out of Delta, Ohio, transferred from Tennessee last year, played in nine games as a backup behind an outstanding quick end. Bob Beamer now is getting his first chance to start. Gets a first fumble recovery in 1986, puts Toledo in business, first and 10, they're on 24-yard line. Yeah. Bergen is the quarterback once again, and Bergen goes down by Terry Warren. Bergen on the back, Terry Warren. Terry Warren had nine tackles last year against South Carolina. Super intelligent linebacker and drops Bergen for a loss. Credit the defensive secondary with this sack. You're going to see that the Toledo Rocket offensive line does give Bergen good, good protection. Pump, pump, still standing in there. Little room to run, and then Warren makes the close. Secondary had good coverage to keep that from being thrown. Loss of five on a play, second down 15. Give us off to Kelvin Farmer, and Farmer gets the five back and maybe a couple of more. As he gets across the 27-yard line, McGowan in there for Florida State, as well as Greg Newell. Greg Newell makes the initial stop for the Seminole. Stop for the Seminole. Newell was the number three tackler on the team last year. 90 tackles. Great individual ability. Bench press is 350 pounds. Guy's a safety. Bench is 350. I, I didn't see that when I played. We didn't have that in the weight room for DBs when I was there. <laughs> Third down, eight yards to go. Bergen takes the handoff, now he's in trouble. Jumps it off to Farmer, he's got the pass, but he'll be shy of the first down. Fred Jones picked him up coming out of the backfield and Bergen dropped him shy of the first, and so Toledo will have to put it away. 
Fred Jones, Fred Jones, the coaches think he is going to be one of the best linebackers at his position in the nation. Had 17 tackles against Memphis State last year, Fred Jones, and he puts the end to the abbreviated Toledo drive. Local affiliates stand by. Well, we will, we will, we'll, I'll get it out. We'll be going to a local break immediately following this punt. Prim. Boots it another low kick. This is Sanders. And Sanders has dropped at the 41-yard line. 17-0 Florida State. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. We're coming back. Fourteen-yard pass reception from Chip Ferguson to Darren Hollow, and first down, Florida State. As we rejoin the ball game, pass out in the flats to Tanner Holloman, and Holloman inside the 40 and down to the 36-yard line before Brian Jones, the weak side cornerback, brings him down in the wave. Starting here at Doe Campbell Stadium, Chip Ferguson having a good night so far. 150 yards in the first half. I think what Coach Biden will be most impressed with Chip Ferguson through now is the way he's maintained his composure and run the ball club. Eight-yard pass catch by Tanner Holloman. Second down, a long two for Florida State. Ferguson back to throw again. Intercepted. And this is the linebacker, John Marquardt, down to the 39-yard line. Five turnovers for Florida State in this ball game. Marquardt played it only five games last year. And he's starting tonight because of the injury to Pete Stoner. First INT of the night for Chip Ferguson. Good protection, play action fake. Ferguson holds the ball just a little bit too long and makes what I consider a poor position. Mark Ard was right in there to 6 one 2 17 junior. Had some running room back to his right should he have chosen to go that way. My mistake, Ferguson's second interception of the night. He's thrown 26 times for 177 yards so far in the ball game as Bergen finds Eric Hutchinson out there for about five yards. Eric Williams in a stop. First time we call Williams' his number tonight for Florida State. He needs only seven interceptions to break the school record of 15 set by Monk Bonasar, and he's still got two years to do it. You want me to tell you who's number three? Excuse me? Would you like for me to tell you who's number three? Dare I ask? Dare I ask? Talking about my counterpart over here, folks. Farmer, down to midfield. Eford in there on the stop for Florida State. Nichols coming off the bottom of the pile. Get about a yard, yard and a half on the play. Okay, Dave Farmer throws his 189 pounds around just a little bit more than 189 pounds. He'll stick it right up there in the middle with the best of it. That's enough for the first down, however. Here goes Bergen. Bergen. Did he catch it? I think so, down at the 44-yard line of Florida State. Gain of about five on the play. And I tell you, these short routes have really been effective for Toledo. That they are. We've got fa play fake up the middle, looking immediately back left for the crossing tight end. Not poor coverage there by Newell, and an excellent catch by the tight end. Wide outs to either side by Toledo. Two men on this side, Randy White. Well, they're not Randy White, but Keith Tamarine in the slot for Toledo on the wide side. Here goes Farmer. Farmer's got some running room. Farmer's got a first down. Down inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. And Toledo's starting to move the ball. Five minutes, 46 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And bear in mind, they trail by only two touchdowns at a field goal. Greg Newell, Greg Newell the stop once again for Florida State. As we mentioned during halftime, 
it would not be unlikely for Swinwell to come out and throw the ball deep, trying to catch up. Instead, he's chosen to keep the ball on the ground, throw those short routes, and Toledo's moving the ball on this Florida State defense. First down, 10. Bergen dumps it off to the tight end once again, and they're just chewing up six, seven, eight yards a pop, using the tight end very effectively. Yeah, Jeff Barnes on the reception. John, Let's get out of Barry Miller. If things look very orderly on the Seminole sidelines, there's a good reason for it. Anytime any of the players comes off the field, there are these bleachers three deep on the Seminole sidelines. Every player has a position marked on the bleachers by position. So when they come off the field, they go directly to their seats. Bobby Bowden and his coaches will never have to say no when asked the question, do you know where your players are? Bergen tries to drop it off to Keith Tamarine. Stanley Shiver was in there to knock the pass away. Shiver, first, first ball news freshman All-American team last year with 54 tackles, two interceptions. That's that pass away. Third down and three now, Toledo. Big down for Toledo right now. They've moved the ball effectively. They need to convert here and keep the drive alive. Give it off to Roars, who's coming to the ball game. Roars dies for the first down. I think he's going to be a little bit shy. Fred Jones was down there. Nichols was down there. So was Felton Hayes. And they're going to be about a yard shy. And I don't know if I'm Dan Simmer. Let's go ahead and go for this thing. I saw right up the middle, blocked by the fullback on McGowan. Sticks it right up in here just a little bit short. And I was watching the Toledo sideline. No hesitation on uh, Simrell's part part as to what he wanted to do here. Jones in on the stop, fourth down one. Double tight end set for Toledo. Everybody up tight. And they give it to Farmer. I don't know if he got there or not. It'll depend on the mark, Dave. And initially, it looks like he did not get it. And you're right, it will exactly depend on the mark. Thomas Harp coming off the bottom of the pile, but there are about five or six teammates that were there to hit him. It's going to be real close. We're going to bring it in to measure. Take another look. Full house backfield, three backs in there. Big tackle in there in front of a refrigerator way in number 75. Former sticks it right up in there, but good closing there by Florida State. And again, it'll depend on where the official marks it. Florida State football. The Seminoles will take over first and 10, their own 29-yard line, completely dominating this game from a yardage standpoint. 367 yards to just 152 by Toledo, and Toledo at this point just about on the same mark they were last year in terms of average per ball game. Only 250 yards in total offense, their average. All during 1985, first down 10. Give us off to Dane Williams, and Williams crosses the 30 down to the 32-yard line before Steve Huffman of Toledo. In 1985, and this is kind of typical for Florida State, these yardage totals, they outgained their opposition 404 yards to 322 on the average per ball game. Staggering statistic was they averaged 5.7 yards per play, nearly 14 yards with every pass. You converse that with uh, Toledo, who averaged only 10 yards a pass, and an average of only 2.5 yards a play. Dane Williams once again crosses the 35 and down to the 36-yard line. Bobby Bowden, I think at halftime, decided to go ahead, as you indicated, and go to the run and try and establish that a little bit more here in the second half. Don't be surprised, though, if he doesn't throw the ball. One of the keys to Coach Bowden's philosophy of offense is that sometimes you can pass to set up the run and other times you can run to set up the pass. Most coaches believe you can only run to set up the pass. Florida State will have to put the ball in the air to continue to being successful. Third down three, pitch goes to Ross. Ross, going to be close. I'm not sure if he got there or not. Jim Marquardt was there to run him out of bounds. As successful as Florida State has been on offense tonight in terms of uh, yardage, just don't forget that this Toledo Rocket defense was number three in the country, and they are not that different this year. You betcha. They did lose four of their five up men, but they got their linebackers back and they got their entire defensive secondary back. 
Their linebacking core has been depleted due to injuries, and it's fourth down and one, and Bobby Bowden says, we're going for it. Their own 37-yard line. Ferguson, Ross. I'm not sure. I don't believe he got it. He the ball carrier. The onside official rushed right to where he hit after he left, uh, left into the air, not where he bounced, which is an accurate call on that line judge's part. Dexter Clark for Toledo thinks that they've stopped him. And they'll bring the sticks out. I don't think it'll even be that close. They are going to be shy. Toledo's going to take over. Well, Toledo tries it on fourth down and doesn't convert. Florida State returns the favor. And now Toledo in great field position once again, but so far really unable to move the ball effectively on a very staunch Florida State defensive unit. One of the reasons they haven't been able to move the football is that the fact that the defensive line for Florida State is so big. Last year they averaged about 235 a man. This year they're about at 265. Thomas Harpin there at 287, kind of anchoring things at nose guard. First down, 10, Toledo. Bergen. Here's it out to Dane Williams. Williams comes the football. And Florida State gets the ball. and Martin Mayhew comes up with a fumble. Toledo in a nine-step drop, letting everybody clear kind of a flare pattern, sneaking it back out of the backfield. Here we see Perry get the ball. He gets it under his arm, and a good hit by McGowan right there. And Shiver. And Shiver. Mayhew comes up with the ball. Stay down on the ground, get your knees off of each other, and don't get hurt. First turnover. Second. Yes, that is the first turnover for Toledo in this entire ball game. He was up the gut to Ross. Brian Gable, Clarence good in on the stop for Toledo. Holloman and Herb Gaynor come into the ball game for Bobby Bowden Seminoles. Smith and Damari will come out. Good crowd on hand here tonight for the opening ball game, despite the inclement weather, which apparently has subsided here for a while. Rain has stopped, but the field is still off the side. Gain of two on the play, second down eight, Florida State. Fake pitch, Ferguson tries to drop it out in the middle. Clark was out there covering on Herb Gaynor, Steve Huffman, putting pressure in there on Chip Ferguson. Very important for Florida State not to get sloppy here. A sustained drive would continue to solidify that maturity Coach Bowden's looking for both in his offensive line as well as his offensive line meshing with his skill people. When you don't make it on fourth down, the offense uh, opponent turns it right back over to you, and then you go three downs and have to punt. Uh, it gets into sloppy football. Third down, eight. Ferguson, too high. Looking for Ross, and just overthrows him. So the Toledo defense as we indicated, ranked number third, or number three in the nation last year. Holds. In fact, this defense for uh, Toledo has been very impressive all fall practice. They held the offense in the first scrimmage this year to just 117 yards on 44 offensive plays. That's good on the defensive side and bad on the offense. Yes, it is. Lewis Berry to punt for the first time of the evening for Florida State. He hangs a boomer. Healy back at the 15-yard line. And down goes Hewitt. Odell Higgins on the stop. Florida State out front, 17 nothing. will return. As we return to live action, and down goes Bob Bergen down at the 12-yard line. It was John Eford in there putting the pressure on Bob Bergen. And we've got a flag on the field as well. Let's see. Back in the defensive secondary of Florida State. So let's see what the officials tell us. Going to be holding, defensive holding on Florida State. So negate the loss. The sack, by the way, Lewis Berry's last punt before he went to that break, 51 yards. Not a bad way to debut. Berry averaged 43 yards a punt last year. For our SCN affiliates along the line, 
Our next break will be commercial break 12, position number 12. It is a local break. Local break coming up next here on the Sunshine Cable Network. A lot of viewers might not know why you would have a holding penalty on the sack. What normally happens there is a linebacker is trying to hold up a tight end or a back out of the backfield, and it's actually pass interference, although they don't call it that. All right, that'll move the ball up to the 24-yard line and give the Rockets a first down. Four down linemen for the Seminoles this time. Give us off to Farmer, and Farmer dukes four down to the 30-yard line. Gain a six on the play for Kelvin Farmer, in addition to being Gary's the team's Gary's leading rusher last year with 748 yards, was the team's number three pass receiver. 23 grabs last year for 218 yards, and they're expecting him to challenge for all conference honors this year. Eric Hayes bringing Farmer down to the last stop. Senior out of Lakewood. And as we say, David Roars is really pushing him for the starting position this year. Nice problem to have for Dan Simrell. Again, the tight end burns. And that's been the bread and butter play all night. For Toledo, Burns in the first half caught three. He's caught three more here in the second. Toledo content to continue using the short and intermediate routes, specifically tight ends and backs out of the backfield. Florida State opened that way in the first quarter. They've now gone to the wide receivers. Toledo content to stay in with their original game plan. 25 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Ball to 36-yard line. Bergen back to throw. He's going long, and he's got a man wide open. Great diving catch by Bob Wasinski. That's the longest play from scrimmage of the night. He beat Lenny Sutton, who was back there at the strong safety position, and... What a grab by Wasinski. Toledo comes out with three wideouts. Florida State does not adjust. What will happen when you make mistakes is people get open. They get mismatched. They get in coverages they're not used to. Excellent catch That's in the third quarter. But it's all going to come back. It's all going to come back, Keith, on a penalty, apparently. I did not see the flag. It was a 35-yard. Incomplete. Pass and catch. No, they're ruling it incomplete. They say they just fell on the football. I didn't see that either. I think they got robbed. If we could see that replay one more time, maybe we could uh, make a determination. But I think Toledo got robbed. Some of the Florida State fans are glad to hear it, however. Second down, 10, Rockets. Confusion again in the secondary. Here comes the blitz. Shiver is in there to drop him. Take another look at the replay and see if he dropped it. It's going to be hard to tell from our angle because we're directly behind. Looks like he lays out. I don't see a ball. I don't see a ball. There it is on the ground. Good You're call right. by the official. You're we right. stand corrected. Very good call by the official. With that, the third quarter is now history. It's Florida State 17, Toledo nothing. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. Dave Reed along with Keith Jones. Fourth quarter just getting underway for here at Florida State University, Doe Campbell Stadium. Third down and 15, Toledo as we resume action. Trailing Florida State 17 to nothing on the Rockets. Bergen lofts one down in the flats and nobody really there. Martin Mayhew was back there and he was doing a good job of covering Joe Windover, the flanker. Windover, the 6'4 freshman out of Midland, Michigan. Let's go down to Barry Milligan. Traditionally, the Florida State fans like to see a high-powered offense here in Tallahassee. But ask Bobby Bowden the characters of a good football team and he'll tell you two things, kicking and defense. With Lewis Berry and Derek Schmidt, Florida State has one of the best kicking games in college football. And the defense has showed tonight through three quarters that it's ready to play in 86. Deion Sanders on a big punt return for the Seminoles. Florida State in business, or leading 17-0. And we'll give you the trivia question right after the play. New quarterback for Florida State is Peter Tom Willis on second down and two. Willis going for Holloman in the end zone, and no chance. 
Holloman was well covered back there by Brian Jones, number seven. Peter Tom Willis, while we were away, completed an eight-yard pass to Darren Holloman. He's the freshman, 6'3", out of Morris, Alabama, and he's going to see some playing time this afternoon. All right, let's give you the question once again. The trivia question is, what is the Seminoles record against Nebraska? They play the Cowboys next week. If you know the answer, send, it, send your answer to Indian Trivia, Continental Cable Vision, 5934 Richard Road, Jacksonville, Florida. We need your name, address, your telephone number, and the cable system to which you subscribe. Have a chance to win that beautiful rug. Third down and two, Florida State. Give us off inside to the fullback, and I'm not sure they got there. David Palmer. David Palmer. And on the carry, the 225-pound junior out of right here in Tallahassee. Peter Tom Willis had a super spring. They said his whole game improved. He was a redshirt last year. He's a class 4A player of the year in Alabama where he threw for over 2,000 yards. 21 touchdowns his senior season and coaching staff very high on this young man. Again, we see Florida State opting to go for it on fourth down, certainly within uh, field goal range. Fourth down in the yard. Last time they did this, they were caught shy. Pitch out goes to Sammy Smith. They won't be caught shy this time. Smith, hit knocked out of bounds at the 25, but wait a minute, there's a flag down at the 25-yard line. Dexter Clark, I believe, the man that knocked him out of bounds. But let's see what the officials say. I think say. we've got holding against Florida State. Yes, it is. And that may put you out of field. Well, I don't know. It's still about a 49-yard field goal for Derek Smith. Take a look. Ball sweep. Sammy Smith working to his left. I believe the holding's right there on number 92 for the Seminoles. Whoever it is is coming back five yards and run it again. Ten yard holding against the Seminoles. And so Florida State will send in a kicking unit. It is not, it is Derek Smith. I saw Lewis Berry coming in. Kirk Coker, of course, held for Derek Smith. First two years, Lewis Berry is the new holder. Smith will be going Lewis against the wind. And this will be an attempt of about 55 yards, but we're gonna have a timeout on the field apparently before that happens. This is a local break. This is a local break on the Sunshine Cable Network. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. We'll be back. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines, serving Seminole fans with convenient flights to the Northeast. Come fly with Eastern. Derek Schmidt gets set to boot it for Florida State. They'll put it right at about the 45-yard line. Lewis Berry will hold. Tony Yeomans had some trouble getting on the field, and that's why Florida State had to call the timeout. Berry's going to try it from 54 yards against the win. He holds the school records. This one's going to be shy. Just didn't get the foot into it to Derek Schmidt. So with 13 minutes and four seconds to go, Toledo will take over, trailing 17 to nothing. 13 minutes, four seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And let's see if it's going to be A.J. Sager or Bill Bergen coming in for the Toledo Rockets. It is A.J. Sager. So Coach Dan Simmerell alternating quarterbacks as he did so much last year and apparently trying to find out who is really number one this year. Sager dumps it out to Burns again. That's his seventh catch of the evening unofficially. Burns shines at the 40 and down to the 41-yard line. I tell you what, Toledo has not put any points on the board. You've got to be a little bit happy if you're Dan Simmerell with the way the offense has moved in between the 30s. They haven't been able to put it in the end zone, but between their 30 and Florida State's 30, they have moved the ball relatively effectively. Gain of six on that play, second down and four. Felton Hayes in on the last stop for the Seminoles. 
Sager gives off to Roars. Roars turns the corner. And bang. Runs into Alfonso Williams, a strong safety. Six foot sophomore out of Pensacola. He's going to see some time this season as well. Here's a good one for you. Three of the Rockets have played Miami University 33 times, but will play the University of Miami for the first time next season. Of course, we're talking about Miami of Ohio and not the University of Miami. In fact, they play Miami next season as well as the season after that. First time Toledo's been in the state of Florida to play a football game in 12 years. Sager just barely gets it off. And I tell you, he was absolutely leveled from behind by Eric Krohn. And uh, also Shelton Thompson for Florida State. Thompson, the linebacker, 6'3", freshman out of Lakeland. And you see Eric Krohn, big number 94. I believe he busted his helmet. Yeah, I think he did. Well, that's, that's got to hurt. <laughs> Feel the recipient. Krim will do it once again. Again, a low kick. Sanders can't hang on to it, but wisely falls on it right at the 32-yard line. With that, Florida State out front, 17 to nothing. We're coming back. The on recovery. Capital City, stay with the best at the Tallahassee Hilton. There are 246 spacious rooms with double and king-size beds, including 13 luxurious suites fit for any executive. There's a pool with a sun deck, two restaurants, and a lounge with lots of entertainment. Location perfect. You're 15 minutes from the airport with limo service and only walking distance from the Tallahassee Leon County Civic Center and Florida State University. The best in the capital city is the Tallahassee Hilton. Peter Tom Willis. Here comes the reverse. Sammy Smith to Holloman. Holloman crosses the 30 and now he's got room. Holloman down the midfield before Dexter Clark throws him out of bounds. We saw Holloman do that time and time again last year, and it looks like that's going to be another very effective play for the Seminoles this season. You would think that after Florida State has run it as many times as they have, that defenses across the country would get used to it. The problem with it is someone for, has forgotten to tell Darren Holloman that he can't do this. I want you to watch this as he takes the, the handoff from Smith. Not a great exchange right here, good enough to make it work. I want you to watch him turn this defensive back around. Hello, which way did he go? That's why you can continue to run the reverse. First down, Florida State just inside Toledo territory, 49 yard line, the Rockets. Willis gives off to Sammy Smith. Smith gets a yard as Holloman gained 19 yards on the previous play. Word to our local affiliates once again on the Sunshine Cable Network, we are coming up on Position 16, commercial break 16. Next break will be a local break. Second down, 10 yards to go. No gain on the play that time for Sammy Smith. 11 minutes to go in this ball game, and a lot of people figured by this time Florida State would be way out front, but so far a very determined Toledo Rocket team has held their own pretty much against the Seminoles. Give us off to Sammy Smith. Inside the 45, down to the 44-yard line. Eagles in there on the stop. Steve Huffman also there for Toledo. We haven't mentioned it throughout the telecast, but Florida State opting for a more percentage of the time going from split backs. Coach Bowden thinks that the pro set can better adapt itself to its new to Florida State's emphasis on passing. A neat play off of that is some handback and counter plays with some guards and, and tackles trapping, something you can't quite do from the eye back formation. Sammy Smith is having an impressive night. 13 carries, 74 yards. Third down four, Seminoles. They fake the, no, they give the reverse. Holloman cuts it back, and Holloman's got some room. Flag in the backfield, however. Holloman scampers, but he will be shy of the first down. Usually you look for a yeah, back back block or something like that on a reverse, somebody catching somebody from behind. It will go against Florida State. Let's see what the Rockets do. It would be fourth down, and FSU would have to punt. You can't go through the wheel too many times. This time, Toledo's defensive front's waiting for it. Holloman almost makes a great play out of it by turning it up, but it closes too quick. All would have come back anyway due to the clip penalty. Toledo's got a decision to wait because Florida State's going to look about fourth down and two, or a third down and considerably longer. And Florida State's been going for it on fourth down, so that really makes it a tough decision for Dan Simrell, and apparently he's going to take the yardage. When it's 15, I think you have to, Dave. Yeah. 
talking to Bobby Bowden, and you know there, there are really four positions on this team where he did, really did was not sure who was number one. Tailback with three there, fullback with uh, three there, wide receiver where he's got four or five to choose from, and the offensive guard position. We've seen a lot of guys in the skill positions for Florida State tonight trying to determine who should start and who should not. Pleasant problem. Yes, it is. Sammy Smith has been so uh, so far the most impressive of the running backs this evening. Third down, 19, and Peter Tom Willis is going to go back to throw. Got time, now closes on him. Oh, what a fan. And that's a first down. Paul Sander just leveled Peter Tom Willis right as he threw this, one, but he completed it for 20 yards to Holloman. Deep crossing pattern, seven-step drop. This is what Peter Tom can do best, throw the ball deeper. He actually has a better arm than Ferguson. All he lacks is the experience and, more importantly, the maturity that Chip Ferguson has. But that time he comes through and delivers on a big third down play. Holloman is having a night receiving the ball, too. First down, 10. 9-13 to go in a ball game. Fake to Sammy Smith. Willis tries to get it to Gaynor. Dexter Clark is there to break it up. Apparently, we're going to have defensive pass interference. Doug Spidal was putting pressure on Peter Tom Willis. I think Dexter Clark ran into Herb Gaynor. Dave, here's where I have a problem with the college rule. If we get the opportunity to see this on replay, I'll tell you what it is. The defensive back was going for the ball and was simply trailing behind. He got his left arm out, probably came real close to making uh, contact with the ball. We'll get a good look at it from here from the end zone. You'll see the defensive back coming in from the right, closing. I have a problem with that. That should not be pass interference according to Keith Jones's rule book. Okay. Unfortunately, Paul Fist, or Smith, the referee, is working by a different one down there. That is true. Paul's been doing it much longer than I have as well. First down, Florida State, 24-yard line of the Rockets. Gator out of the flats, one-on-one. -on -one. Try to isolate Gator on the quarterback out there, in this case, Harold McGuire. And Gator jukes for about seven yards down to the 23-yard uh, line. Willis, proud of that pass, was three, uh, three completions, 28 yards. One of the things we have not highlighted, and I think that uh, as we now mention it, the viewers will catch on it, you haven't seen missed tackles by this Toledo ball club. They're very well schooled, very fundamentally sound, and one of the things they can do is square you up and nail you when the time comes to make the tackle. But again, we saw the case trying to get Gainer one-on-one -on -one and unsuccessful. Well, that's the Gainer! Touchdown pass. Peter Tom Willis to Herb Gaynor. Seminoles out front, 23 0. Snap, spot, kick is up, and it's good. And with that, Florida State with 8 minutes 33 seconds to go, out 24 0. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. Just 48 yards for Herb Gaynor, 24-0 Florida State. Kickoff goes to the Rockets. 
And we've got a flag on an ensuing kickoff, but let's see what that's all about. Looks like it's going to be a holding or a clip back in the pocket. Defensive secondary. Gator five catches, 48 yards. He's having a night tonight. Going to go against Toledo. Eight minutes, 28 seconds to go here in this football game. And so Toledo will take over after the penalty. The lay a game is what I think I saw. Might have been too many men on the field again. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Too many men on the field. Holding the against Toledo. So we'll go back to the 12-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. I'm going to go back further than that. Now it's about the 12-yard line. Close enough. So the Rockets deep in their own territory now. Trailing Florida State 24 to nothing in the second half. Then pretty much all Florida State. Piccolo down to store cable in Miami. Jeff Carlton, general manager, 120,000 subscribers on the Sunshine Cable Network. We're glad you're with us. First down, Toledo, 12-yard line, they're on. There goes Farmer. Farmer across the 20 and down to the 22-yard line. And now Bobby Bowden starting to give some of the second teamers some time. Greg Newell in there on that stop. Also John Parks with Florida State. Parks, 6'3", sophomore out of Ormond Beach. Dave, you got to be impressed with Farmer. 748 yards last year in front of an offensive line that some considered not that great. He's having a good night tonight and showing why he's a good back. Perry almost bobbled it. Now he bounces outside. He's got some running room. Jumped up at about the 30-yard line and falls forward to the 34. Tracy Sanders in there from the cornerback position. Moved from free safety this year. Missed the entire spring due to a shoulder injury, but he makes that stop. Perry, the sophomore, out of Mount Vernon. Perry hits it up the middle on a quick opener. Actually gets stacked up in there. Right, finds daylight out to his right or left as we look at it. Shows a pretty good burst of speed for a 204-pound fullback. Gets upended there by Sanders. First down, Rockets. Sager. Once again, trying to get out to the tight end. That time, not the tight end, but the wide receiver, Bob Wasinski. Wasinski couldn't hang on to it. Win tonight by Florida State would give Bobby Bowden his 10th straight opening game victory. Florida State would be 10-1 in opener since Bobby Bowden took over as head coach. Now you take a look on the sidelines or on the wide side of Joe Windover. Here's the reverse. And nearly disaster as the new man in the ball Rod Whitlow listed as a backup wide receiver, 5'11 junior out of Brook Park, PA. Couldn't quite hang on to that one, and so the Rockets will look at third down and very, very long. Third down and 18. See what AJ Sager does. Here comes the blitz. Sager has time. Whoa, that was tipped to the line. That one up there like a lame duck. And with that, Toledo's going to have to put it away in the Florida State defensive unit. Most of them second teamers at this point. It's a round of applause for the partisan faithful here at Doe Campbell. Deion Sanders will go back to receive the kick from Paul Krim. Grimm gets pretty good punt off this time, and Sanders will take it at his sidelines. Oh, what a block. And Sanders has got all kinds of running room. Sanders all the way across the field, down to the 41-yard line. I want to tell you, John Hadley for Florida State just took the stuffings out of Keith Sanders for the block that sprung Deion Sanders for that punt return. You know, everybody talks about Deion Sanders' athletic ability as a defensive back. Where he is going to be most prolific at Florida State is as a punt returner. 
He has some talent that only God gives and his ability to read and see things and to turn on a burst of speed that is absolutely phenomenal. And look to Florida State to strengthen their strength, uh, punting and, and kicking game through the punt return. First down Seminoles, 42 yard line at Toledo. I wonder if we're gonna see Danny McManus. Willis jumps it out to Vic Floyd. And Floyd is so dangerous out of the backfield as a receiver. Gets it down to the 35-yard line of the Rockets. Floyd last year caught 10 passes for 71 yards. And last year, of course, the Rockets didn't allow more than 26 in any ball game. They're real close right now. Florida State with 24 points. And knocking on the door once again. Six minutes, 16 seconds to go in the ball game. Second down five. Willis out in the flat. New man in the ball game for Florida State, Ronald Lewis out of Jacksonville. Florida State out front, 24 to nothing. We're coming back. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines, the airline with more flights to more fun vacations. This winter, visit a Caribbean island with Eastern, the leader in service to all the Americas. Ronald Lewis, right out of Jacksonville, Florida, catching that last pass for Florida State. Six foot, 174-pound freshman. Peter Tom, getting some pressure, finds Holloway out of the flat. Holloway to the red line. Holloway down to the 15. from Peter Tom Willis to Tanner Holloman. Rodney Tatum, backup cornerback, along with John Bowser on the stop for Toledo. First down, Florida State. 5.19 to go in this one. Florida State racking up 460 yards in total offense in this ball game. Willis going to the end zone. Had him open, just overthrew him just a little bit. Pass intended to number 23, Patrick White. Patrick White, the intended receiver for Florida State. And now Bobby Bowden kind of opening up the bench. Pat White, 6'2", 192-pound freshman out of Tampa. Rod Tatum on the coverage for Florida State. Second down, 10. kinds of new faces in the ball game now. Except for that one, Tanner Holloman. Holloman tries to bust it up the middle and Paul Sanders, the first man to hit him, and somebody swung on somebody. Yeah, it looks that way, don't it? Tanner Holloman, the ball carrier. Flag in the defensive secondary of Toledo. You know, we mentioned earlier we had an altercation over on the Toledo sidelines, and it appeared that uh, a couple of players were ejected. We were wrong. Uh, Wayne Hogan, the SID for Florida State, informed us of that. Clip is going to go against Florida State. That's a big one. Drop you all the way back to the Toledo 30-yard line. So instead of looking at third down and 10, you're now looking at third down, or rather second down and 10, you're now looking at second down and 25. Florida State has not utilized the post corner route yet, Dave. Now would be a good time to, to try it. Split back pro set, very likely time. Second down and very, very long. Willis is going to go back to throw. Go across the middle, trying to hit the tight end, Tom O'Malley. Keith Saunders, the linebacker there, covering O'Malley. Saunders moved from strong center to linebacker with the injury to uh, Jim Stoner, who was a redshirt last year. Actually, it was a quarterback in high school with Saunders. Tom O'Malley couldn't quite hang on to that one. O'Malley had three catches last year for 40 yards, and now Peter Tom was set with throwing his first touchdown pass as a Seminole. We're looking at third down and 25. Lots of time. Cross the middle. Great grab. Patrick White and 
he took a shot from Rod Tatum and managed to hang on to the football. But I think they're going to be shy of the first down. Yes, they are. 16-yard catch by Patrick White. So that will bring on Lewis Berry. Number eight score in Division 1A, of course, was Derek Schmidt. Needs only 50 points to become FSU's all-time leading scorer. I don't want to mention All-America last year by the AP and UPI. Not going to get this one off, however. Barry just tries to make something out of a bad situation and lofts it up towards anybody. And with that, Florida State will turn it over. 24-0, Florida State winning. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. Toledo looking at first down and 10 on the Florida State 22-yard line. I formation for the Rockets. Sager still your quarterback. Getting some pressure and down goes Sager. Eric Steele, the outside linebacker. We did not, get, did not expect to see him in a ball game tonight because he's suffering from injury. 6'5", 228-pound junior out of Neptune Beach. Dropped A.J. Sager. And drops him back to... I'll call it the 16-yard line. Loss of nine on the play. You're looking at second down and 19. Sager gives off to Roars, and Roars gets a couple of hard-earned yards. David Roar, that's really about it. Keith Carter, the inside linebacker for Florida State on the stop. Word to our SCN affiliates, our next break is position 19, commercial break 18. Position 19, commercial break 18. Next break will be a local break. Loss of two on the play, and so the Rockets look at third down and 21. Sager getting some pressure and finds a man. Down at the 30 yard line. Sager makes the best of a bad situation as he drops it out to David Boudreau, the backup tight end. Boudreau was not supposed to play a whole lot tonight. You look at John Parks for Florida State. And so now the second and third and fourth teams are all in there for both teams. It will still be fourth down to lead with that. Florida State calls a timeout. So with two minutes, five seconds to go, Florida State out front, 24 nothing. We'll take this short break. You're watching Florida State football on the Sunshine Cable Network. that one off. Sanders fields it over the shoulder. He's going to have some room. 
but it closes on him pretty quickly as Toledo does a pretty good job in covering the low kick. Pat Delaney, defensive back, in on the stop. Let's see if we're going to see Danny and Danny McManus in this ball game. There he is. Yes, sir. Danny McManus, 6'1", junior, as you look at Deion Sanders coming off. McManus, 6'1", junior, out of Dorian, Florida, has not played since the Memphis State game last year. What a rounding ovation for Danny McManus. Excellent arm, quick feet, trying to recover from two concussions and, and the flu. Gets his first action in well over a year. Victor Floyd up the middle, crosses the field and down to the Toledo 48-yard line. It's got to be a boost for McManus just to get into the ball game. You know, at one time when you're sitting there on the bench and the doctors are calling your career as opposed to your performance on the field, it can get very discouraging. But he kept his head up, he kept his composure, he kept his, his maturity about him, and uh, I know he's excited about being in there. This is good for him. Second down three, Seminoles. McManus out of Damia. Will throw for the first time. Tucks it up to spec the ball. And Scott Damari, his first grab as a Seminole. Six foot freshman out of Miami. Danny McManus' first uh, throw since last season. That's going to be a nice find for Florida State. He had the best spring among all the Florida State receivers. Good Damari. Simple three step drop in the slant. McManus lays the ball out for him. Damari goes out there after it. Gets his arms tucked underneath him to hang on to the football. McManus shot to Floyd. Floyd down to the 35 yard line. Richard Boyd. That was the first Here down play. Like. by number 35, Brent Kiner. Brent Kiner in on the stop for Toledo. And Florida State just going to run this one out. 39 seconds to go. One more play. And this one will be history. nothing for out of state. 26 seconds to go, and this might be the last play of the ball game. Give us up the gut down to the 25-yard line, and joining up yardage is Florida State. Victor Floyd on the stop. Victor Floyd on the carry once again for Florida State. 12 seconds, and let's see. Did somebody call a timeout? Nope, nope. Clock's running. Clock's just going to run. And with that, the Florida State Sun is going to be 1-0 in 1986. So Florida State comes out with a 24-0 victory. No surprise there. Maybe it's the prize of the way it happened, but Bobby Bowden comes out 1-0 in 1986. He's won 10 straight season openers, and now will turn his sights toward Lincoln, Nebraska, and Nebraska Cornhuskers next week, a game that you'll be able to see on national television. Impressive outing for Florida State, 529 yards in total offense, but the Seminoles were turnovers, and that really is what kept Toledo in the ball game. They shut down a Toledo offense that really had no chance of... Uh, making any headway against a very superior Florida State defense. I think defensively, the Seminoles have got to be very happy tonight. 199 yards for Toledo. I think Florida State will be very satisfied with their defense. Their defense got put into some situations due to offensive turnovers, responded, pulled the score to, uh, to a shutout, and uh, I think Mickey Andrews and his staff will be happy with that. All right, 24-0, our final score. Stay with us. We'll be back with some final comments right after you take a look at this.